Hey everybody, my name is Shug, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about tarps. Now we're going to look at the Cuban fiber tarp, which is often called the Dyneema tarp now, or some people call it DCF, which means Dyneema Cuban fiber. Uh, we're going to look at a Sil Poly tarp and Sil Nylon tarps, and mainly we're looking at these uh, to look at stuff sack sizes when they're packed down because everybody shows you a tarp hanging up, but a lot of people want to know what a tarp looks like when it's all packed up. We want to see what takes up the least amount of space as opposed to the weight, even though we will cover the weight. Because to me, a lot of times, it's the actual volume of the thing that comes into play for me. I can carry a few more ounces, but I don't always have room to get everything in like my ULA ohm, uh, depending on the trip or the number of days or the weather or how much insulation I need or jackets or how much food I'm carrying and still have uh, the amount of space that that Cuban fiber or Dyneema takes up because it does not pack down as small as Sil Nylon or uh, Sil Poly. So we're going to talk about them tarps a little bit, so stay with me here. There you go. That's them in their stuff sacks. This is one you've seen me camp under a million times if you watched any of my videos. This is what I call my Black Crow tarp. It's my little DIY tarp, 11 foot ridge line, uh, a little over 3 feet on each side, so maybe 6.5 feet across. This is my Warbonnet Mini Fly. That's a Sil Poly tarp. This is Sil Nylon. This is my Warbonnet Superfly, which is a really nice big tarp. Full coverage, 11 foot ridge line, 11 foot ridge line, 11 foot ridge line, 11 foot ridge line. This is a hammock gear, Cuban fiber, or as they call it now, DCF or Dyneema tarp with doors. So you can kind of see the bulk. Every one of them is in snakeskins, because that's how I carry my tarps. Uh, they have very little bulk and they're just kind of wadded up in the bag. You can kind of see the size comparison there. I don't know why I feel like I have to tell you what you can see because you know what you can see and I can't see what you're seeing but boy I sure know what you're seeing because I am what you're seeing. Now not everybody knows what a snake skin is but you can see on the tarp there's this mesh cover over it right and it sort of controls your tarp and it's the way I like to pack it up and then I just cram it right back into the stuff sack. So each one of my tarps here is done that way. My Superfly and a snake skin. All in snake skins. Alright, we got the hammock gear DCF Dyneema Cuban fiber tarp on the scales. And we're looking at 13.9 ounces. And that would be in grams... 394 grams. Now we're looking at my DIY Sil Nylon Black Crow Tarp. That is 15 ounces, 0.2, and that is 400, 431 grams. Now we have the Warbonnet Mini Fly on there, made of Sil Poly. And that is 16 ounces dead on, and that's um, one pound or 454 grams. And here the Warbonnet Superfly, a really big tarp made of Sil Nylon. That's one pound, 9.3 ounces, or 718 grams, or straight up ounces, 25.35 ounces. You like it? It is a camouflage. I don't do it like the camouflage, but Stormcrow told me this camouflage pattern on this DCF, which stands for Dyneema Cuban Fiber Tarp, uh, it's not translucent. Uh, this is not a see-through one, but what's nice about this tarp, it's four feet from here to here, 
So a little less in here just because of the catenary cut, uh, which if you don't know what that is, that's that little bit of a curved shape you see on a tarp, and that helps keep it pitch tight. So that's basically the shape of this tarp, 11 feet along your ridge line at the top, four feet in the corners. Of course, you got your, your door flaps that you can pull in and create a windbreak there. So now what I'm gonna do is just hang the other tarps on top of that, just drape them over. So you can just kind of get a size. Uh, the reason I wanted to show these in the stuff sacks and the way different fabrics stuff down is it is always a constant battle between weight or size. Just kind of spitballing and just kind of alluding to uh, the different sizes and what they look like in the stuff sack. And I think I've said that 10 times already, but you know what? Sometimes I know that you just need to be present in the moment, even watching a YouTube video, and don't go clicking off and checking your email or your Instagram or your Facebook or your MySpace or whatever. Stay in the moment. What? Now I realize a little bit back in the video I was talking about snake skins. And a lot of you don't know what snake skins are. I can't assume everybody does. So here's what I was talking about. We got this mesh over your tarp. And you simply just pull the mesh back. Thus unleashing the tarp. Which is kind of handy because if you're setting up in the wind, like when I had it sort of half out, you can just let one end out and kind of set those ends and then pull your snake skin on back and, and finish setting the rest of the, uh, the tarp. And I just like, instead of taking it down and trying to fold it up, I just like pulling the snake skins right over it when I'm done. So that would look like this if I were at camp and I'm packing up and I want to pack up the tarp. I would sort of roll my tarp up and start pulling it right over. You get the idea, right? Kind of easy. Not for everybody. Maybe adds a few grams because it's really just bug netting material sewn into a tube. But uh, that's your choice. I just thought I'd show it to you because I got them on mine. And I did, so I'll move on now. All right, so looking at these tarp sizes, this is the Superfly over the Hammock Gear Dyneema. And, yeah, you know, here's the, here's the inside cut of that, and my finger is about where that is. So we're getting almost an extra 10 inches or so of tarp coming down. Guess what I'm trying to say? It's just a bigger tarp. Let's look at it as it sort of dangles over from inside because that's the kind of excitement I like to bring you into. So here we're looking, we still got doors. And, you know, they're comparatively, but a little bit bigger than the Dyneema. And you can see on the, on the sides there, there's quite a bit more fabric all around. Same on the doors over here. Got the doors. They just go down a little bit lower. So having a, a bigger tarp on the sides, you can see it's a lot bigger, plus a heavier fabric, but a much uh, less expensive fabric. Sil nylon is much cheaper than Dyneema, Cuban fiber, DCM, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the, the DCM tarps have, are quite expensive, quite an investment to save some weight, whereas something like the Superfly, which you can get in Sil Poly, which is a little bit lighter and a different feel than sil nylon. It absorbs a little less water. So you got some choices, but that's probably my biggest tarp right there. And that's how it sizes up compared to the Hammock Gear DCM or Cuba Fiber Dyneema Dyneema Cuba Fiber. We'll just call it DCM. Why don't we just call it light expensive tarp? The DCM Dyneema Cuban Fiber tarp is the lightest but the bulkiest for its size. So I kind of showed you the biggest tarp I have and showed you the lightest tarp I have and then taking a look at the bulk of the two.
You know sometimes when you go pick a person up and they look real skinny and light and you pick them up and man they're all muscle and density and they're really heavy and then there's other people sometimes that look like they'd be heavy and you go lift them up and they're as light as a barrel of rabbits. Well this is pretty much the same. So you got to figure out is it space you're interested in or is it weight or is it a little bit of both and plus we're talking about money too. The DCM tarps, they cost a lot more because of the fabric. Whereas sil poly and sil nylon are still a really, uh, really good value for what you get. So it's kind of up to you. Are those, uh, you know, is, is shedding a few extra ounces worth it to you? It certainly is to a lot of people. So that's your game to play. I'm just showing you what I got here. I really love this one. I can't wait to get it out sometime soon, as soon as uh, spring gets here or in a couple of weeks hopefully but I gotta have a colonoscopy next week <laughs> and uh, I have a workshop and I have a photo session and a few things so I got kind of a busy busy little couple of weeks coming up and then hopefully we'll get to get out on the trail and I'm still trying to knock out 40 paintings and I'm uh, I've done six kind of into my seventh right now or is it uh, Something like that. You lose track. It's going to take me about a year. And then I'm going to do a show. So life is full. Hope you're well out there. Yeah, just finished this one a few days ago. And I tell you, some of the hardest parts were, you know, when you really get into painting and you're looking at trees and leaves and the colors in them and the colors that pop and the highlights and all the way the light hits the hammock. And uh, that's my buddy Wandering Fool. I took this picture once when we were on a trip. So I always wanted to do something with it and just trying to get where the where the sun was coming in this way and hitting him as he was napping and that was a fun one and uh, just sort of started this one trying to keep it real abstract and loose and wild got to go back in and work a little bit so that's what's been going on here buddy everybody all secure in sector seven is Shug here and while we are having this COVID-19 pandemic, I thought I'd stay home for my camping trip and I thought I'd do a little video for you. <sighs> Buenos tardes, mucho gusto. I tell you what, COVID-19 talks a lot, talks a lot of crap. I'm tired of hearing it. Come on, come on. It's confusing, I know. <laughs>